So there are lots of areas spotted around the mountains where there are viewpoints and this is one of them. Now the viewpoint is actually just up here but I kind of parked the car there. It's like a little spot for the car. Oh my god! The video will not capture how high this is. definitely didn't disappoint and after our pit stop we hit the road and headed south towards Palmer which was an hour's drive away. Ah. Here he comes, we got given some complimentary car oh. bar, didn't we? We did. I've just derobed, declothed. It's hot here guys for this time of year. It's 26 degrees here. It was something like 15 degrees at 6 a.m. this morning so the temperature's just gone really high and they said this is really not normal for this time of year so definite global warming issue we're here to explore but there's a rooftop bar which i might go up and have our complimentary carver up there and then figure out where we're going to go in the city i asked her about boat rides and she said it's too windy this time of year so they often don't have them so if you're coming to mallorca in november it, the winds pick up and there's not many boat opportunities so so on the rooftop but we need to go higher let's go higher higher hey Tig hi It's so cool. It is amazing and these seats are really comfortable as well. Did not expect this. Very windy up here but it's so hot. It's kind of nice to have the wind and the breeze. So we're just gonna chill up here for a little bit, work out where we're going and then start exploring the city of Parma. Look how pink I look. <laughs> Why? Is every travel place I'm gonna look pink, either pink from the cold or pink from the heat. <laughs> just constantly pink. So our hotel is located in the old town of Palma, so we are going to explore. We're en route at the moment to the palace. We'll see you when we get there. It's like a unique place to sit down next to this building. I've no idea what it is. Loja de Palma. That's the name of the building, Loja de Palma. come out where the back of the palace is and we're going to go around to the front. So far it looks pretty awesome. So this fortified palace is called Almudena and is located right next to the Cathedral of Parma. So this is one of the residents of the Spanish royal family and it's categorised as Alcazar. So an Alcazar is a Spanish palace or fortress. So this, this palace is a bit of a maze, it's so huge. We're just kind of having a wander. There's some steps that up here. There seems to be a few people, so we're gonna follow the people. When in doubt, follow the people. It is so windy, I've taken to this kind of little alcove. But basically, the cathedral and the palace are right next to each other. It's quite something, but the size of it, the scale, they are both colossal. You see the palace, you think, oh, the cathedral's not going to be as big as the palace. But it's, it's taller. Obviously, the palace has lots of layers, so maybe the palace is bigger overall, but when you're standing here, the cathedral looks pretty hefty. Here, Artig's taking a picture, I'm going to splash him, so here he comes. Hi! Hello, 
follow me. <laughs> this place is magical. <laughs> he doesn't even respond. <laughs> That's indicative of the problem, isn't it? He's so used to me behaving like a clown that he's now just a mean to me. He's like, he's like, oh, you that doesn't work when you're vlogging because I can see behind myself. <laughs> I see you there. Oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> The castle dates back to 1281 and was built upon a Muslim fortress. Seeing as we weren't going into the castle today, we decided to wander around Short Del Rey Gardens. So all these bits that we're going through at the moment are bits that are just publicly accessible. We didn't get a ticket today. It's such a lovely palace, honest to God. And there's lots of little water features all around in this section. Lovely little place to have a little wander around. I love the fact that so much of it is accessible without you having to pay. So time to leave the palace and explore somewhere new. There's a castle that we want to get to. It's about a 45 minute bus ride or 30 minute bus ride. So I'll just get, maybe we can look for a taxi and then what do we find here? Taxis. So maybe we should do it as a sign. Castle Belliver and it's actually three kilometers above Palmer and it costs four euro, they're four euro each but four euro to get inside. So the castle was built between 1300 and 1311 on the order of King James II. The surrounding view from here before we even get into the castle, before we even do that bit, the views around of Palmer are pretty awesome. So Belva Castle, which is also known as Casta de Belva, it's Catalan for lovely view. Catalan is a language that is spoken in eastern Spain, the Balearic Islands, as well as some parts of France and Italy. Though the castle was intended as a royal residence, it only housed a couple of royals. Its main use was as a defence and a prison. So we climbed to the top, but there was a lovely panoramic view of Palmer and the surrounding area. an amazing view. Wow, such a surprise. So there is the castle and cathedral we were at earlier and it's amazing that you can see it from the top of Belva Castle. view of Palmer. I believe it's three and a half kilometres above the city. The views are just spectacular from up here. So after the golden hour we decided to head down and find a nice spot to watch the sunset. So we decided to go down these steps. They lead right back into the town. We thought we'd save ourselves a taxi fare. It's a 45 minute walk to where we were, but if we walk and just take our leisure and just stop off at places en route, then it'll fly by. I actually think that this route knocks off some of that time, so hopefully it'll be a little bit less. So that's the route we just did. It's so nice here in the evening, just on the, where this castle is. You can smell wood flies burning and people are just chilling, taking their dogs for a walk. And it's just really peaceful. Got about an hour left before the sun goes down. I 
I love doing this when I'm travelling, just kind of wandering around and seeing what we find. We're hoping to get towards the water and find somewhere nice to sort of chill and watch the sun go down on the water. That sounds like a plan. It's such a nice area because this is the capital of Mallorca, but you've got these lovely little quiet zones that are quite residential as well, which is nice. There's something about dogs barking that kind of, when I'm walking down these sort of narrow streets, it makes me think of Europe. I don't know why, it's just feels like a really distinctive memory and I have no idea why but I always associate barking dogs with Europe. So we decided to stop here and grab an ice cream. So that's what we're gonna do. This is a Ferrero Rocher and a mint chop chip combination. That is unbelievably good. Oh, ticks looks interesting. What the hell is that? So at the bottom you have cookies, cookies and cream I think, and at the top you have cherries. Oh, it looks delicious. Mmm, the cherry is amazing. And the cookie and cream is delicious too. Mm -hmm. Does it work as a combination? Yeah, definitely. So we're both going to chill out, have our ice cream and try not to make too much of a mess. <laughs> I'm here with a violet drink. This is an old fashioned, but it's the strongest old fashioned I've ever drank. <laughs> so we kind of, we stopped off here. So it's like a half an hour back to where we were gonna go and get some food. And we stopped off here, because it looked, the candles threw me in to be honest. And then I was like, ooh, a cocktail maybe. So we had a cocktail and then they brought shots and then we had another cocktail, another free shot. You get the idea. Taking me and talking about relationships. Eh eh. How long, and this is a question for the comments, how long, probably all thinking of God, here she goes. But how long, you know when you start dating someone, how long before you start to feel safe in your relationship that it's not gonna go anywhere? Is there a time on that or does it depend on the person? This is getting a little bit deep, but it just kind of came into our heads because me and Tig, you know, 20 years of togetherness. So it's a long time. And just wondering really what the story in Balamori is. Some of you guys may know, about my whole sexuality thing. It's still there, it's still in the background, or well, in the foreground in every ground, but nothing takes away from the fact that this lovely man has been my companion for 20 years, and my lover for 20 years. So, whatever happens, that is always the case. So we just had a really lovely chat with a guy called Augustine. He was so friendly, so lovely, and he's come here to Palma. So he's from Argentina. I wanted to get him on the camera, but he was a little bit shy. But I did say that he should try and do some videos with his wife, so you never know. If he ever does, I'll shout him out on my channel. From what Augustine was saying, Palma, normally in the summer, is rammed. As in all the streets, all the bars are absolutely rammed. Whereas now, you can kind of pick any one you like. And they'll be open, but they'll be, have your choice of seats and things like this. Something's going on here. Okay. And they also have this sort of scheme in uh, Mallorca. People that do seasonal work, they have a sort of scheme here where they can take 70 or 75% of their salary when they're not working to kind of make up for the sort of uh, closed periods, which is kind of cool. That's a cool little scheme and initiative. We're just wandering back. We're hopefully going to get somewhere that does some traditional Spanish food. So we are nearly at the restaurant. Had a few little stops along the way. Nothing too crazy, but it is such a lovely place, Palma. I definitely rate it. It's really nice to sort of explore. There's still enough open that you can have a really nice time here. And this side of me is the port and everyone touch wood seems really friendly as well 
that beautiful, beautiful building we think is the Museum of Contemporary Art. It looks amazing, look at that. It's so pretty guys, it's really beautiful. We made our way back towards the old town in search of some traditional Spanish food. So this place looks like it's full of little restaurants, even now off season. And it's a Wednesday, so there's a little pizza here, which looks really cosy, cosy, intimate little place. But we are trying to find somewhere traditionally Spanish. It looks amazing. It's all beautiful for Christmas. Look at it. Look. We were so enchanted by the valley of trees and lights that we had to grab one last drink in this beautiful setting. After our drinks, we decided to check out this tapas bar called Ombu. So tapas is the Spanish practice of having a selection of small plates of food eaten between or before meals, usually snacks or appetizers. These are often served with a drink. In fact, traditionally, the tapas came free with a drink. This has never happened before. We've got a load of food and we don't quite know what we've got. <laughs> I really have to check out the menu, but it's like a goat's cheese, <clears throat> aubergine. It's very, very nice. It's got potato foams and egg. It's very nice, but it's very garlicky. I mean, I like it, but it's intense. Given the juice, it's actually really good. Tomato, honey, cheese, the chili. It's really nice. It tastes really good. The garlic on its own with the potato mousse is a bit intense, but for the bread, it's absolutely delicious. So I highly rate it. These mini burgers already look the business. I take out both of those to himself. This is a medley of all different foods. Right now I've got a pad thai with tofu, which is steamingly hot. So this was kind of like quite a swanky place, so I don't know how traditional this actually is. In fact, I don't think it's very traditional at all. Having said that, it was really delicious, and we kind of kept the Spanish vibe alive by having tapas. So we were looking for somewhere that does paella, but it was a little bit more tricky than we thought. We just spotted one near our hotel, though, so that was silly. But a lot of places that do it, they kind of want you to let them know 24 hours in advance when you want to do it traditionally. Anyway, the food we have was really good. So now we're heading back to the hotel, absolutely whacked, but it's been a really good day in Palma, so we've definitely had a lot of fun. So goodbye from our last day in Mallorca. We'll see you on the flip side, but before we disappear off, I'm gonna quickly check this area. We decided to check out the rooftop before we headed to bed. show you guys something that me and Tig found a little bit freaky. Are you ready? Don't look down. Oh, it's horrible. You can see right down all the floors. It's so weird. Oh my god. Imagine it just collapsed. Off we go. So until next time guys, we will catch you later. Absolutely exhausted. See you tomorrow. So it was time to leave Mallorca. It was definitely a different experience to the one we expected, with so many places closed out of season. But the island itself was really beautiful. The beaches, mountain ranges, and of course, dramatic caves. 
Despite everything being closed, we managed to have a good time and were able to explore this beautiful island. We had some amazing sunsets and we got to see another side of this party island. I'm glad we were able to experience the island in its own right and I hope you enjoyed coming along with us. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.